Hey guys, welcome to Children's Ministry Sunday Worship. Glad you're joining me here again today. Good to see you guys. Let's begin our worship time with prayer. We're going to prepare our hearts for worship. And so we're going to pray for the three things we normally do. The first thing is we're going to confess any sin we have before the Lord, making our hearts right with Him before we come into worship. Second, we're going to thank Him for all the good things that He has given to us this past week, this past year. Right? We're going to thank Him for everything, for a new day, for life, for health, um, for our teachers, for our families. Right? Everything that is good, we're going to thank Him for and remember His goodness towards us. And then lastly, we're going to ask God to teach us something new, to speak to us today, because He has something that He wants to teach us today. So I'm going to give you guys time to pray, and then I will open us up in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this Sunday where we can come before you and worship you again. Lord, we thank you for another week. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and faithfulness every single day. And Lord, we thank you so much, especially for Jesus Christ. For if it was not for him, we would not have the hope, we would not have the joy, we would not have the faith that we have in you. We thank you, Lord. Um, for all that you have given to us. As we go into worship today, would you help clear our minds so that we may be able to focus on you. We want to learn more about you. We want to draw closer to you. So would you come and meet with us? We thank you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's stand up and have a time of praise.
job, you guys. So, as I mentioned last week, we're in our Advent season. And in this Advent season, um, we focus in on Christ. We focus in on who we're truly worshiping during this Christmas time. So last week, our Advent theme was faith. Today, our third Sunday of Advent, our theme is joy. And Christmas is a joyous time because Jesus Christ was born, right? That's why we're celebrating Christmas. He came to save the lost, heal the sick, and destroy the works of the evil one. He came to save us all from our sins. And so we rejoice and we worship him for who he is and what he has done for us. But you know, sometimes along the days, the months, the years, we forget why we worship Jesus. And we may, you know, in the midst of craziness and buying presents, preparing food, and all these different things with Christmas, we may forget that we're truly celebrating Jesus and we kind of lose that joy, right? We forget um, what Jesus has done for us. We forget why we should have joy in Jesus. And, you know, sometimes it's not just the craziness of Christmas or the craziness of life. It could just be that we just don't feel like it, right? Because especially this time of the year, we're just kind of stuck at home. So as we, you know, go into this Christmas season, we may feel a bit discouraged, we may feel a bit down. And you know what? That's okay. You know, John the Baptist, he also felt a little bit discouraged because of his circumstances. We all know that John the Baptist, right, he was born before Jesus, just a little bit before Jesus, and um, he was the one uh, to proclaim and make the way for Jesus, right? He was telling people, turn away from your sins for the kingdom of God is near. The Messiah is coming. So he told people, get your act together, right? Come back to God because the one that he promised to send is coming. But as he was preaching and baptizing people, he got sent to jail because he offended the king's wife. And in jail, he kind of thought, what am I doing in here? And then he kind of thought, what if Jesus is not the one that we've been waiting for? You know, um, like, why am I stuck in here? And what is, what is he doing out there? You know, he's not doing completely everything that I thought he would be doing. And so he sent two of his disciples to talk to Jesus and ask him, are you the one we've been waiting for? And before I go a little bit more deeper, I want us to read this passage from the Bible. So we're going to read Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. And it says, John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about all the things the Messiah was doing. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? Jesus told him, Go back to John and tell him what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, those with leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. And he added, God blesses those who do not fall away because of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began talking about him to the crowds. What kind of man did you go into the wilderness to see? Was he weak? Was he a weak reed, swayed by every breath of wind? Or were you expecting to see a man dressed in expensive clothes? No, people with expensive clothes live in palaces. Were you looking for a prophet? Yes, and he is more than a prophet. John is the man to whom the scriptures refer when they say, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way before you. I tell you the truth, of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist. Yet even the least person in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he is. John was in prison and he became discouraged, right? He heard what Jesus was doing, but he thought, shouldn't Jesus be doing more? 
And so he thought to himself, what if Jesus is just a fake prophet, the one that maybe he's not the one we're waiting for? But Jesus replies to John's disciples to tell him that, you know, the things that were being prophesied are coming true. The blind can see, the lame will walk, or the lame can walk, the sick are being healed, and the good news is being preached to the poor. So Jesus tells the disciples, go tell him that everything that was said about me, that was said, um, that was prophesied about me, they are coming true. They are coming true. And then you know what? He goes on to tell the people how John the Baptist is also the one who was prophesied. Because um, in Isaiah, right, it, would, it said that there would be um, a prophet who would come before the Messiah, who would prepare the way for Jesus. And he says, because of what John did, preparing the way for me, right, he is the greatest of them all. And so he encourages him and lifts him up. This year, Christmas looks really different. We're not all together at church. You may not be able to see all your family members. You won't get to have, you know, all the fun with your friends during winter break. And you may not be able to travel. But during this season, we still rejoice. Our hearts should still be filled with joy because Jesus came to this earth. He was born. He came to heal the sick, save the lost, destroy the evil one, and establish God's kingdom. When Jesus was born, the angel said to the shepherds in Luke chapter 2, verse 10 through 11, they said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. They said, Rejoice! There is great joy for all the people today because the Savior is born. Even though this Christmas looks very different, let us rejoice and be joyful because Jesus was born. He came to this earth to save us and he promised to always be with us. Let our joy spread to those around us because Christmas is not just about presents, food, going on trips, and having fun. It's about the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to save the world. And he is with us today and forever. Let me say a quick prayer, asking God to continue to um, remind us of the joy that we have in Jesus Christ, in his birth, because of what that meant for us. So let us take this moment to pray. Lord, the good news of Jesus' Jesus' arrival brings such joy to our world. Reach those who are lost and searching with the message of hope that we have through Jesus. God, allow your message of peace to bring comfort to our anxious world. As we all go about the holiday season, let the message of great joy pierce through all the chaos and into people's hearts. Amen. I know we just prayed, but let us end with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, guys, I hope you guys have a great week. Go spread that Christmas joy to those around you. All right, guys, I'll see you guys again in our daily devotional and in our next week's Sunday uh, worship video. Bye.